Hello, it's Simone, and it is finally time to show you all the things that I do with my fountain pens in and inks in various different journals. This is all the stuff that I'm going to talk about right now. Um, I have filmed some deep dives into some of those journals, and I will link them in the cards above or in the description box down below. Um, and if I don't have a video about those things, I would love to make one in the future. And if you see something that you would love to see first, leave it in the comments down below. I am going to start in kind of like when an ink com comes into my house and when a pen comes into my house. And I will show you what happens then. So when an ink comes into my house I like to swatch it and I like to do that on two different media one is these swatch cards I used to use coloring cards but I'm now making my own on uh, mixed media paper and I also like to swatch them in my swatch book which is this is a different size, but both notebooks are from um, Paper Penguin Co. They're both 52 GSM. This one was a an A5 notebook. I cut it down to standard size. And then this one is a personal size. Um, I swatch the ink like so. I write down the name and uh, do some do an, an ink swatch right here. And that's that on here. And then now that I'm using, I used to use them on a ring vertically. Let me see if I have one right here, like so. On the back, I write if it's a sample or a bottle where I got it from and when I got it, like here, I can show you right here. This one, I got it as a sample. I am passing it along. I got it from Sarah from Australia and it's I got it in March, 2023. Um, the cards look like this, and that's basically when this sample enters my collection. Even if I pass it along, I keep this card here to make color comparisons. Um, in here, I use a pencil to cross out if I have passed on an ink, because I sometimes I use these to look at often flip through these when I'm looking for a new color story for my next month and see what colors I would, I'm drawn to using next. Sometimes that uh, comes to me over the course of a month when I'm like, oh my gosh, I would really love to see how this ink performs in that pen. But sometimes I'm like, I need a light brown ink to complement this whole color story. What color could I use? So I'm looking for that in here. This is how my notebook looks like now. And I will have an actual flip through of this notebook soon. If it is not a sample, but a bottle, I also additionally fill out one of those Subame ink collection cards. This is OK Fool's paper. And then what I write on that card is this information, this. I think I have come to the conclusion that this is how I'm going to do it, yes. Uh, I write down the name of the ink, the maker, when I got it, where I got it from, and how many milliliters go in there. I do have still some of those, uh, these uh, diamine ink swatches in the front. But if I ever get to the point that I need more space, I will take those out because technically they're samples. I keep this in one of those um, Traveler's Company ring binders. And this is a um, business card holder, basically. And it fits those cards perfectly. And I really like how this works. So... I enjoy the swatching of inks. It's very meditative. Um, I love to see the colors on different papers. Um, I 
this way I see if I want to put the ink into a pen at all and if I need to find my next um, ink for my next color story that's where I especially the book that's where I look the second thing that happens is not just an ink enters my collection but also a sample uh, what am I talking about a fountain pen uh, that's why I started this notebook in the beginning of 2023. I just labeled these, this one this week and then this one this week as well. Haven't started this one yet, but I'll tell you all about it. Um, I am writing down what pen it is, where I got it from, and I need to write down that this is the medium nib. And then I write down basically what ink I use. I do these swatches right here and then when I inked it and when I uninked it. This way I can see how the inks look with this pen and I also can see how often I use a pen. Like for instance, I've used this one twice. I am, it's of course the data is skewed because I had many of those pens before I started the notebook. I went back to November, December. So I think I started this over Christmas break maybe. The Lamy 2000 has been inked three times. Platinum 3776 has been inked four times since that time. So basically every time, every month. And then look at this, has been inked all the time. This just shows me uh, what pens I'm drawn to and which pens I'm not. And some pens don't have an entry yet, not because I haven't used them ever, but just because I haven't used them in that time span since I started this notebook. In the back, I have an index, which I totally messed up, unfortunately. Um, here, I missed a number. And each pen is listed here. I have run into a bit of a tr problem or a, it's probably just my brain um, because I have more nibs than pens and I would rather like to document using the nib than the pen. So what I started to do here is I documented the Bennu number no. six broad nib and the Franklin Christoph number no. six sick extra fine medium nib. Extra fine nib, no, not medium. And so this is skewed because this doesn't give me the number of pens that I have. It gives me the number of nibs that I have. And also, I already sold one of those pens already. So, yes, I'm keeping a list so that I can find those easier in the back. I, I thought it would be better to start in the back because this has so many pages. And so I wouldn't run into the problem of um, running out of index paper in the front. I am not opposed to using this whole book if I am getting rid of some of those pens as well. So that's why I didn't... I, other books, I took out the staples and made them smaller, but I decided against it for this one. Same with this one. This one I haven't started yet, but I want to do exactly the same thing for my ink bottles. Not samples, because that doesn't really make sense. But I want to use, and I'm going to put leave pages empty right in the front and start right here and then I want to use again one page for each bottle I'm going to make a little swatch right here write the ink name when it came into my house and then I will swatch all the pens that I'm inking up with this ink down here just so that uh, this gives me a good overview on how often I use a pen what the ink looks in this specific pen and if there's pens, inks that generally don't really work with this pen or do. So this is data that needs to be collected over a long period of time because clearly I have only used this pen once since I started it. Um, I seem to love this pen because I've used it all the time. And um, yeah, it, it works really well with any ink that I put in here. That's what I see here, but this is not what I see so far. And I think... This is what I'm going to love seeing when I'm using this as well. Haven't started yet. Maybe I will have time. I don't didn't put put away my ink bottles before the move. 
So maybe while I'm waiting <laughs> to move, this is something that I can do. I have this in a cover for, from Eberhard Studio. That's why I actually purchased these in B6 slim size. Again, this is from Paper Penguin Co. And I just tuck them in here. But when I'm going to be moved, I will have um, an what is, what is that called? All that I can put elastics in here so I can put those on elastics. And I do have a personal size notebook that can fit, can fit in here as well. I'll talk about that in a second. Then I'm talk, I talked about the logging aspect. I log a lot of things, but this is the samples that come in and the bottles and the pens. Now, every month I ink up, I talked about the color story, I ink up a certain amount of pens and uh, those pens get paired in with inks and that's, that's what I document in here. So this is a handmade notebook, this is personal size. I wish I would use a bigger notebook, but I decided I will stick to this until this is finished, which will actually take me over a year. Ah, oh well. Okay, uh, but I can't wait to start using a an A5 notebook for this. These can still be that small size, but this one I would love to use a bigger size. So I am documenting the currently inks in three different papers just because I'm a nerd. Uh, I love seeing how the inks look on the various different papers. I can show you maybe another month. Maybe let's let's go to July and August, which is here. Um, July looked like this in here. This is just brighter. Uh, the nibs look thicker if you compare it to this here. Um, it, it has grown on me. I didn't really like Cosmo Air Light paper, but now I'm still using it and I really like it for this. I, I wonder if I would like it for a, um, and this is what it looks like here. I wonder if I would like it for a journal, uh, but yeah, for this, I definitely like it. And then the MD paper, I haven't really kept up with. Uh, this is March, I, and then here. Because the paper is yellow, the colors look a little bit different. Because of the warm tone that the uh, paper has. And so it's just interesting to see how the color then looks when the paper is yellow. And also my fountain pens are very much... Um, tuned to work really great on Tomoyo River paper and I can definitely feel a difference in the writing experience when I use this paper. All right, so that's what I document in here. In this first one, which is the Tomoyo River paper, which is the paper that I enjoy using most, I also do grading notes uh, which I gather from this notebook. But I'll tell you about this. And I have changed it over time because I haven't really been sure on what, how I would like to grade my pens. I just did plus minus and then notes. Here in January, I tried to rate the ink and the pen, which didn't really work for me well. But then I decided to do it this way. I'm just adding these swirlies here so I get another image of what the pen looks like, the ink and pen combination, just some really short words about the ink, and then I'm grading them by how drawn to using that pen I was at any given moment. So if I am choosing a pen to journal in my in my journal, um, which one do I have to make myself use? And which one would I use every day if I didn't have 10 other pens inked? I really enjoy switching them around. 
Oh yeah, that was February, even though it says January 26th. That, those are the pens that I inked up for the month of February. And so here is the ranking. So this one I was drawn to most, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth. So I like it that way. We'll see how it pans out in the coming months. And yeah, so I really enjoy doing that as well. It also is basically the notebook that I use to film the currently inked videos. So there's that. And then in order to form an opinion and remember what I thought about each pen, I use this Hobonichi Weeks, which is my ink jotter. I call it that. It's an ink log. Um, I just, every time I use a fountain pen to journal, I write down what the pen is, what the ink is, and then how I liked this specific writing experience. I'm not doing a an all for, one for all. I'm doing it every time I use it because sometimes maybe an ink dries. And so it's darker when I, when I start writing with it. And that's something that I want to note. But maybe that just happened because I didn't write with it for 10 days and not when I wrote with it after five days. So that's things that I write down. I, I write down what I like, what I don't like. Sometimes it's so weird that I don't like a pen today. And the next time I use it, I really like it. And it might just be because I was in a different mood. So that's what I use this for. At the back, I have, I do have a video of this, so I'm not going to go all the way deep in there, but I do take several different notes. And um, I have a video and go into more detail about those. But the back notes pages is where I plan my next currently inked, my next ink rotation, my next color story, whatever. Um, this has been a recent change, but I started an ink journal in 2021, I think. Yep, it says 2021. And uh, I used to do it like that. Oh, well, not like this. Just a splatter, layers, water test, and a an affirmation. Uh, then I thought, mm, I don't like that. I want to have writing samples as well, so I went back with all the samples that I still had. I don't, I didn't completely finish and wrote writing samples here with various different pens. Oh, I didn't even have a chromatography for this one, but I do add chromatography as well. And I really, I filmed most of those and that wasn't a driving factor for me anymore, so I stopped using it. But in February, I think, I was really drawn to exploring these inks again. And I decided to switch it around, uh, change the layout, uh, change what I do. And now I'm trying to explore, deep dive into all the inks that I have inked in the current month. So all the ones that I haven't, um, how do you say that? That I haven't explored yet, I am going to explore in the same manner. Uh, in the beginning, <laughs> it was quite a lot of work because I haven't done that to any of the inks that I had here. But now, um, I can refer back to some of these, like, for instance, in April, I have Robert Oster Tea Time inked in a fountain pen. So I can actually just look at this and look at the um, ink exploration that I have already done. But that's what I do. I just went, when I picked this notebook, I had this laying around. This is an old Hobonichi A6 in the AVEC style, and I just used it for these ink explorations. I was going to go and use another one, but then uh, Naomi from the Inky Hobbit, you can find her on um, Instagram, 
uh, sent me this ink swab book and I did some research. This was included in 2022 in an ink flight. Uh, I don't know if she got it from there, but and it's kind of falling apart, but it works really well for this. It's an ink swab book, 40 pages, single-sided, and I found by doing the research that this is also 52 GSM Tomoe River paper, just like that. Um, this is what it looks like when it's not used. This is how I use the pages. I am just translating basically this to here in a different format, of course, uh, but I'm doing all the same things. Um, this is just more compact down here. And so, yeah, I, I really love that I'm getting to use this notebook that I was given for these ink explorations. And I am really enjoying doing those. These take about 30 minutes. And usually I have like a little bit of time while making dinner or just before I do start dinner. And that's usually when I do those. I use the Mysterious Affair at Styles to uh, use for these writing samples down here. And I'm currently on page five down here. So I haven't really done a lot. And I know that that is not going to happen. I just needed something and I really enjoyed this book at the time. And so that's what I'm doing. So I have two more things that I want to talk about. Actually three, because I thought of one thing. Um, this is, I would call this my tester book. I put my uh, rainbow color order here. I use this for testing new pens when I ink up new a new rotation, um, troubleshooting, when I smooth out a nib, when it's clogged and I don't know what to do or trying to make it work again. Uh, that's what this is for. I could use any kind of paper, but this was in my stash. It's Tomoe River paper, so it's perfect for this. And so that's what I'm using it for. And once this is done, I'm just going to add another cheap Tomoe River notebook that I might have in my stash. Maybe another Hobonichi, who knows? Something that I'm not really uh, drawn to using for anything else. So that's what this is. This is another book that was in the ink flight in February of 2023. It is from Wearing Ghoul, um, a color swatch book. It can hold nine ink bottles on each page. It has 40 pages. And what I want to use this for is for, and I haven't started yet, um, color studies is a little bit much because I'm not really studying the color. Um, I am drawn to the same colors over and over again. So I have accumulated various samples in, in inks that are the same color, basically. And so I would like to swatch these on here, like a deep dark red or an ochre or these olivey greens that I love to use. So I want to swatch them on here and also do an ink, uh, ink chromatography. I had to get rid of this sample. It was empty, so I started this one here. But I have Ferris Wheel Press Buttered Popcorn, and I do have another a couple other yellow inks I would like to compare here. And so I want to do that sometime. Uh, that's why I currently don't destash any of my samples because I really want to do this before I pass them along just to see. I hope, my hope is that I can see either they're all the same or there's various differences in, first of all, the shading here or the chromatography right over here. That's why I want to do this. That's what I want to use this for. The paper is really lovely and usable. So that's what this book is going to be for. And then I had an idea a long time ago and I also talked on it about it on YouTube but I never got around to doing it. And that's something that I, in the past month, I actually thought about it again. And maybe that's something that I want to start actually really tackling as part of a journal thing. Where is it? I found it somewhere. Um, here. 
um, a dedicated journal, not not like this, where I just write down what ink it is, but more a all the pens that I have in my collection that are near and dear to my heart. I would like to draw them. Uh, I would like to put the inf where I got it from, like tell the story of that specific fountain pen, how it came to me, how I liked it. I didn't like it at first, but then I fell in love. Uh, I love, I, I want to also add some stats because I'm, I feel like I have, I'm drawn to a certain type of pen, um, the finials, the shape, the material, the nib, what filling system it is, when I purchased it, at what price, um, and how I love it, how much I love it. And yeah, so that's a journal that I would like to start at some point. I hope I can bring it to fruition, but that's all the random nerdy fountain pen stuff that I do with my inks, with my fountain pens, all the journals that I use and the swatch cards and all the things. And I hope this was informative for you. I hope you were inspired. Uh, all of this is not necessary to use a fountain pen and ink. This is just me hyper focusing on a hobby and absolutely enjoying it while I'm at it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you soon. If you want to support me, I am an affiliate at Atlas Stationers. I le I'm leaving the dis the code down below if you have some fountain pen needs notebooks that you need now for your all of your ink journals head on over to atlas um if you want to support my channel in any other way i'm over on Kofi, and you can buy me a Kofi if you want to i really appreciate everyone who already did use my code and sent some money my way through Kofi. i really appreciate you it helps keep these videos coming and I hope to see you in my next one. Until then, bye.